So this week, uh, we're continuing to spend some time talking about uh, emotion. Uh, obviously, that's going to be a theme that runs throughout uh, our entire time digging into the psychology of learning. And I think probably the reason for that is because it often gets overlooked. And we, we, we tend to focus on cognitive processing, and we separate that from emotion, emotion in, in educational literature. And, and I think the reason for that might go back to this idea that, uh, that the cognitive and non-cognitive are distinct, and that affect and emotion is something that happens sort of uh, parallel to some of these cognitive processes when really they're, they're incredibly interconnected. And, uh, and so part of what I'm trying to do in this class is to, is to bring that connection together for you, force that connection so that we're always aware uh, of the role that emotion plays. So we'll, we'll get to that a little bit more uh, uh, somewhat later this week. We start out talking about personality uh, in a couple of different ways. Um, uh, one, uh, the, uh, the being uh, sane and, and insane, uh, or in, being sane in insane places uh, study, which is, uh, there are a few studies along these same lines. So, uh, so you're probably familiar with at least one of them that you've touched upon at some point. Uh, and then, and then the gender identity, um, one of the uh, earlier gender identity studies. Uh, I, I think both are um, are important. Um, you can find a variety of different ways to make connections. I think uh, to uh, to what's happening in schools with children and with staff. And I guess that's one of the main thrusts I want you to consider as you listen to me. Uh, as you get ready for these readings and for this week, and you're, you're thinking about your big question. Uh, and, and in doing that, um, I want you to, to always keep in mind not just the children, but also the, the adults uh, within your educational community. Uh, you know, your uh, paraprofessionals, your, your faculty, other administrators, parents. And, um, and, and so in, th in this week, when we, when we kick off starting this conversation about personality, I mean, there, there are lots of, you know, sort of metaphorical ways that you can kind of draw from these studies, which are, which are very different than what's happening in schools in a lot of ways, right? So um, uh, these aren't school-based uh, studies. And, and so I'm, I'm asking you to do, do a little abstraction here. Uh, but but also very directly, I think that there's some uh, there's something to be taken away from these readings for the way we classify children and, and adults. Uh, formally, we're classifying children in schools, and I think informally within communities, we classify these the personalities uh, of adults as well. And and those classifications that we give them, whether it's it's formal and there's a file on it, and a process, or whether it's informal, um, it it colors the way that we treat people. It colors the way that we set expectations for people. Uh, and it creates a lens through which we might see the exact same behaviors from two different people, one that we have a classification for, one that we don't. And our expectations um, would take that exact same behavior and apply different meaning to it. And that meaning we apply to it is going to affect the way we interact with them, the way that we, um, we receive information from them, the degree to which that we want to share um, professional social circles with them. And, and that's incredibly important for building community, for building trust, uh, for building a strong educational environment. And it's a very natural thing to do. Uh, so I, what I'd ask you to do is I'd ask you to, to, uh, to look at the readings with that in mind. Uh, I don't want to color you too much because you, you may have other very interesting and important perspectives to bring. I want you to, you know, to bring that too, but I at least wanted you to prompt that with that idea. When you get into the discussion board uh, this this week, uh, I'd like you to, to begin anew with reflecting upon your big questions. Uh, that's that's kind of the, the Monday work that I want you to engage in. So as you do that, you know, you'll notice that I kind of I give you a light Monday. And... And so I, I don't mean for you to just take a day off uh, on Monday. What I'm asking you to do then is to use that time to look forward to these readings, uh, to start to identify, you know, you, you're not going to read them all on Monday, but to browse through them, 
to get a sense of what's coming and to do think to have time to think and to process and to develop important professional questions for your practice and and your uh, development in thinking about how people learn uh, and how people work together. So uh, I do that very purposely. I think that one of the things that we don't do enough of is we don't provide thinking time. And this is, I've structured that. And and a lot of times we, we push the thinking time to the very end when we're just reflecting on all this information we've thrown at you. And I don't want that to happen either. I want there to be time at the beginning and at the end. The beginning is for you to ask big questions, to make predictions, to try to talk about, um, you know, think about your own mind and then to talk about the discussion board, you know, what you think the relevance might be of what we're studying this week. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with.